Malugi Diego Ibu doctor Wale manu mwene no sereba na kumwa Ane kuka ne ku Wanya gawe mutu ono Aga makone ga role Olo makina lo I bless the name of the Lord for this second night into our program today. Yesterday I shared a message with us on the shadow that makes history. And I'm pretty sure that there are men and women who caught the fire of that message. And I For me, the victor's crown of righteousness, for being right with God and doing right. With the Lord, the righteous judge will award to me and recompense me on that great day, not to me only, but also to all those who have loved and yearned for and welcomed his appearing. You can be seated tonight.
two persons lived here on earth. Two, they lived here on earth. And then they were called or known by the same name. Each of them answered Saul, Saul. It looks like somebody who comes to the church. You can be a member of a church without the church through you. Just like somebody can go to the university, graduate without the university passing through the person. That is one of the problems that we have today. There are graduates. They have their degrees. But when they speak, you don't see degree. Somebody can pass through a school without the school passing through the person. Somebody can pass through a church without the church passing through the person. <clears throat> Two persons can sit in the same classroom. But at the same time, they may not come up or come out of that school with the same knowledge. Because one wasted his time and one was serious. Since he lived here on earth, at the end of the day, one said, I have played fool. But the other one said, I have fought the good fight. Choice made a difference between two of them. I am addressing two persons tonight. Two persons. Number one, those who have decided to live eternity careless life. And those who have decided to live eternity driven life. There are people here tonight who are not concerned about eternity. They want to live and do what they want to do. They don't want to live their lives. Bear in mind that there is somebody who was there at the beginning of your life who will surely be there also at the end of your life. Before I draw the curtain tonight, I want to show you two persons, two groups. That's my assignment tonight. I will begin with people who live the eternity careless life. What it means to live eternity careless life. My mind goes back to a very young man. Each time I remember him, I remember what I call shattered destiny. Do you know you can shatter your destiny? I told you last night, you have a wonderful tomorrow. I told you last night, you can make it. I told you last night, you can be the tallest tree of your family. I told you last night, there is a future. I told you last night, you can be great. You were made, the material you were made with is the material for success. But I tell you today also, you can shatter your destiny. If you go to the burial ground, the burial ground is the richest place on earth. Burial ground. Wow. 
If you go to the burial ground, paragon of beauty, ebony black, those who were beauty personified. The other day when people were looking at the pictures of victims of the air crash, some people were looking at the beauty of people who died. I want to tell you today, no matter how beautiful, it doesn't matter how pointed your nose is, the ant of the ground must visit it. This is true, you must die. But if you go to the burial ground, you will see unaccomplished visions, you will see unfulfilled dreams, president that never be, powerful preacher that never be. If you go to the burial ground, you will see millionaires that never be, leaders that never be. May you not be one of those who will descend to the grave without accomplishing your purpose for people. May you not be one of those. I have a wish and prayer for everybody participating in this program. Hear me. I sit over you. I prophesy over your head by the grace of God. You will come to your grave without any ocean yet unnavigated. Buganda Bori Alaba. Do you know that it is what prompts laughter at the deathbed? Go and ask people, nurses who work at the hospitals, even at homes, when people are about dying, some struggle to death. It takes few giants who smile into death. Ale makankaba. Struggling to death. God, can you give me one more chance? Ah. I remember things I should have done which I didn't do. I couldn't clear my road. I couldn't clear my road. I couldn't make the road clear. May you not die unprepared to meet your maker. May you not die unprepared to meet your maker. If you die unprepared to meet your maker, your churchianity has become a wasteful venture. Hear me tonight. I'm talking about Gehazi. Now, hear me, this young man. Let's go to Gehazi and Israel, the potential in him. If you look at the potential in Gehazi, you will connect him with the message that I preached last night. Number one, he was a disciple of a man of God that had double and double portion. Look at the logic. Elisha served Elijah and he was settled with double portion. Is that correct? Gehaz served Elisha. The traditional expectation is that Gehaz will be settled with quadruple Elijah. Double Elisha, which is quadruple Elisha. Uh, no. Double Elisha is quadruple Elijah. That was what he was earmarked for. Traditionally speaking. A man with such potentials. Oh my God. Somebody is seated here. And you are carrying double. Do you know you are carrying double? Somebody is seated here. Carrying the destiny of other people. But my tears and worry tonight is that this young man who was potentially equipped he lived a eternity careless life may I share with you the consequences of a eternity careless life he followed Elisha he didn't allow the ministry of Elisha to follow him. He
he did not allow the ministry of Elisha how did it start I don't mind I don't know how the Lord will lead us today Naaman was healed who was Naaman a heavy weight in the government number two what pastors will want to call big fish what pastors would like to call what Gehaz was that man he was healed by the ministry of Elisha let, let me talk to fellow preachers If you are anointed, God will make you a consultant. You can even be in your house and the government will begin to consult you. When a preacher begins to line up at the government house, protocol people will use you to play football because you reduce yourself to a loaf of bread. When you have a message, they shall look for you. When you say the truth, they will incidentally look for you. But when you see a blood sucker and you begin to praise him, you see a 419er, you give him a special seat. When you leave the pulpit and begin to sound like a politi politician, when you become a hired prayer warrior, oh my God, they can hire your prayer ability. When your prayer ability goes in for commercial purposes, I'm afraid you're missing the main purpose of the Almighty God. Gehazi watched this big fish healed. And you know what happened? Naaman brought, the Bible says, a caravan of gifts. If I may use a present day terminology, he brought containers, lorry loads of gifts. And I wouldn't like to say he gave it to the man of God. I would like to use our current day terminology. He, so, he decided to sow it into the ministry of who? He sowed it into the ministry of Elijah. Is that correct? He sowed it. But to his greater chagrin, the man of God said, Thank you for the offer. But as the Lord lives, I won't accept any. Bundai Before you accept a gift, sometimes ask your maker. May we become sensitive. And let me tell this my generation. God cannot change his mind because of money. Hear me today. Wherever you are, hearing the sound of my voice tonight. Money will not make God say that a sinner is no more a sinner. It will not make God say that a criminal is no more a criminal. And I stand to proclaim to everybody, let the church hear this. Let Pentecostals hear it. 
Nobody can buy the gift of God with money. You cannot buy the gift of God with millions. God is too big for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be purchased with money. The man of God rejected a well packaged gift from a, 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 a top a governmental top notch of the day. I wonder said how you go with your gifts. Wow. Gehazi could not understand it. He couldn't understand it. You know, he looked at it and looked at it. He started swallowing saliva. Wow. Mm. Caved. You know what? As I looked at what the Bible says, when uh, in, in 2 Kings chapter 5, you can read this at home or at your own time, or you can see it, 2 Kings chapter 5. Verse 16. He, he did something. Look at what he said. In verse 19. Go in peace, Elisha said. After Naaman had traveled some distance. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, said it himself. He said to who? You know what? It's not about what was preached and what was what is important. Is what did you say? To, what do you say to yourself at the end of the preaching? You can say to yourself, "I will repent." You can also say to yourself, "I refuse to repent." You can say to yourself, "I will make it." You can also say to yourself, I wouldn't make it. He said to himself, my master was too easy on Neymar. I don't understand that language. I want to ask somebody a question. That somebody received God's miracle. Is that why we should milk the person? That's one question. Is that why? He said he, my master was too, what? Easy. Oh! By not accepting from him what he brought. You know what he said? As surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. I will run after him and do what? I'm going to get something from him. I want to note to us today, Gehazi sat under the ministry of Elisha, but the ministry of Elisha did not pass through him. Instead of believing the word of God, he still allowed his own selfish philosophy to engulf him. And look at what he did. Nobody knew. That Gehazi joined a popular club that exists in every place. Fast Guys Club. He joined the Fast Guys Club. They are everywhere. Among the pastors, there are fast guys. Among church workers, there are fast guys. Everywhere, even in the offices, there are fast guys. He ran. He secretly pursued the name of I want to ask somebody a question tonight. What are you secretly pursuing? I have an announcement to make. Any day you begin to pursue secretly what the Bible and genuine men of God rejected, you are looking for leprosy at the end of the day. What are you secretly pursuing? Oh, may I ask you? What's, what's this nocturnal meeting all about? What are you secretly pursuing 
that your husband does not know? What are you secretly pursuing that your wife does not know? What are you secretly pursuing that your master does not know? What are you secretly pursuing? He pursued Naaman secretly. And of course, he flagged down Naaman. Look at what he said to him. Naaman turned and said, Is everything all right? Gehazi answered, My master sent me to say, Two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two sets of clothing. He told an intelligent lie. He made up the story. Who will not believe him? But but look at the point. Ha! Naaman said, by all means, take two talents. He got what he wanted. He made up the story to get what he wanted. A generation has also, also arisen that can make up testimonies to sound great. People that can add to their testimony. And you know, let me ask you a question. Why will a man add up to a testimony? It is simply, if it is done by a preacher, so that the audience will say, here is a great man of God. Why will you tell lies to get what you are looking for? Now, let me tell you today, Getting what you are looking for is not the issue. Some years ago, I preached a message titled Egyptian Method of Prosperity. You can get a car if you want to. Yeah, you can get money. You can have business breakthrough if you want to. But I have a question for somebody today. What of the untold story of your breakthrough? There is an aspect of your testimony you didn't share with the church. There was something you did in the dark room which you are not bold to proclaim. There was secret money that exchanged hands before you got what you got. Probably, if Gehazi were to be somewhere giving a testimony, he would say, praise the Lord, the Lord has blessed me. But he will not tell that aspect The road to that particular place How he told lies How he lowered his standard ha! He, he, he told what was not the, the truth In order to get what he was looking for He got it Be clear today You can get what you are looking for Now hear me you can rise to the position you are looking for. You can get even marriage. You can marry the person you want to marry. But how did you get what you got? How do you intend hitting that your millions? The difference is this. Eternity driven life or eternity careless life. Eternity driven life or eternity careless life will determine your methodology. It will determine how you want to get to where you want to get. May I tell you, everybody that comes to church is not necessarily a candidate of eternity driven life. Every church is divided into two. The society is divided into two. Those who live eternity driven life and those who live eternity careless life. 
I have an admonition for you today. If you live eternity driven life, may you not be polluted with people who live eternity careless life. They are the doesn't matter generation. They doesn't matter generation. And I tell you today, at that point, he secretly, secretly got what he was looking for. And then he came and stood before the master. The master called. They asked Where have you been to? Where did you go, Gehaz? Before God will strike, He gives opportunity for reconciliation. Brethren, this would have been the point where I expected Gehaz to repent. He said, My master, I'm sorry. The master and the father hardened his heart. Sin looks like a web. Sin has changed. In order to defend the one sin, you get into another one. Somebody commits adultery or fornication. In order to defend it so that it will not be further exposed, he gets into the next one trying to commit abortion. Look at what happened in the life of David in those days. He committed adultery. In order to hide the adultery he committed, he sent the man back home so that he would do something so that the pregnancy would be imposed on the man. When the man couldn't succumb, he committed another sin, sending the man to the war front, asking that he be sent to the hottest part of the war so that he will die in a bid to cover the thing yet it was not covered yet it was not covered hear me today it will not be covered it will not be covered it will not be covered there is a big thunder that is about unraveling what was buried there is a big wind. Wow! A big wind is coming. It will hit the ground. It will open up the ground. It will open what you buried seven years ago. It will open what you buried ten years ago. It will bury what? It will open what you buried. Yes. Where did you go? Hey, Master, I went nowhere. And the man of God said to him, Did not my spirit go out with you? Is it time to run after what I've been rejected? Is it time to become a dog? Get him back to your vomit. Dogs have started coming to church. Men and women have gone back to what they vomited. What they vomited in the past. And he said to him, let me paraphrase it. Because you refuse to learn from your master. Furthermore, you didn't allow the ministerial philosophy of your master to pass through you. Because you want to get rich by all means. I guess Elisha uh, Gehazi was saying, Oga, if you continue with this rejection philosophy, the jeep that your mates are riding, will you get them? The houses that your mates are building, are you sure you will build them? He bragged him old fashioned outdated go away the likes like you people like you cannot be rich people like you don't know the way don't know the way may i tell you brethren which one is better 
To be careless with eternity until you go to hell. Or to be too strict until the Lord tells you, My son, I didn't expect that you take it so strict. Which one is better? Which one is better? We have come to a generation of careless people. A generation of spiritual careless people. People, the, it doesn't matter generation. Oh my God, I begin to pray today that we'll have a people. That somebody will rise up. That somebody will say, God, may I need my mentality. And begin to live eternity driven life. Whether I drink. Let me think of eternity. Whether I walk, let me think of eternity. Whether I make money, let me think of eternity. When the opinion of God does not matter in your life, you are on the express road to destruction. When what God thinks and what God says is no more relevant than what you're doing. Hear me. It is dangerous for you to think you can be independent of God. You can't brush God aside. And begin to do what you want to do. If you don't involve God even in your private decisions, don't invite Him when trouble comes. But I want to assure you today that God wants to say, God wants to fulfill His great purpose in the history of your life. Elisha said to him, Behold, the leprosy of Naaman shall never depart from you nor your descendant forever wow how can a man begin now, let me show you some When a man, there are people when they shake hands with you, they count it a great privilege to shake hands with a great man of God. Not to talk of sitting down to eat on the same table. Outsiders will begin to convert the position of Gehazi. Wow. You are privileged, oh Gehazi. You mean you talk with Elisha? You mean you carry Elisha's bag? Wow! Gehazi, I wish I were you. Don't let another person discover the privilege that you have because of your carelessness. But unfortunately, the man who came closer, the man who came closer to the man of the double portion, the man who came closer, I guess I talked with him, I guess shook hands with him, I guess slept with him in the same room. Instead of being settled with four times Elijah's anointing, he departed with leprosy. He departed with leprosy. He ended ungodly conclusion of a potential ministry. Ungodly conclusion of a potential ministry. Brethren, my worry is not how I started. I started very well. My worry is not what I am doing now. My worry is how will I end. Wow. Lepros. 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 People who didn't come close to Elisha didn't with leprosy. But the man who came so close ended with leprosy. 
The sun can harden a substance. It can also melt a substance. The word of God can melt your heart. It can also harden your heart. The worst sinner is not the robber on the highway. The worst sinner is not the occultic man in a dark room. The worst sinner is not the prostitute in a brothel. The worst sinner is the sinner on the pulpit and sinner in the pew. He has a disease called over familiarity with God. You know what? Good criminals, I use it in a special sense. Good criminals will not like to steal in the church. Good criminals wouldn't like to step into the house of God to steal. When even sometimes when they see a man of God, they wouldn't like to rob a man of God. But somebody who comes to church. And begins to rob in the house of God. Eternity. Careless love. Let me never, never end my journey halfway. Until I reach my good. Until I reach my until I reach my home let me never never end my journey halfway until I reach my home 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 I will never never end my journey halfway until I reach my home let me tell you another person who lived eternity careless life if you go to first Samuel 15 from verse 1 God told Saul Go and completely destroy the Amalekites. Go, destroy all. Spare nobody. And he went. When he went, not that he didn't go, he went. But there was partial obedience. Welcome to the church. Welcome to do some of the things God has asked you to do. But God has not asked you to do some of the things he wants you to do. God wants you to do all the things he wants you to do, not some of the things he wants you to do. Is somebody hearing me today? God has not called you to do some of the things he wants you to do. He has called you to do all of the things that he wants you to do. And so when you do some of the things God has asked you to do and abandon some of the things he asked you to do, you are not an obedient child. He did that. And if you read the Bible, he spared the good ones. He spared the sheep. And he spared a gag. I want to ask somebody a question today. As you're seated here, what have you spared? If we take you to your wardrobe, why has your wardrobe become a museum, a museum for Satan? A place. Those things you condemned, why are you still keeping them? Are you hoping to go back to them? Do you hope to go back to pick them again? Did you just pack them there, begin to say to yourself, well, let me try this thing. 
Let me try consecration. Let me try consecration for some years. If he couldn't walk, I will come back to pick them again. God says, completely destroyed. But he spared a God. Spared the thing. And look at what I want to show you before we end tonight. When the man of God started coming, this man came out. Let me use a present day language. Bless you, man of God. You know, there are people who have Pentecost, I mean, Pentecostal jargons always in their mouths. I know a place where you say good morning. They can't greet you. They can't respond by saying good morning. They are so spiritual. When you say good morning, they say hallelujah. Mommy, good afternoon. Bless you. How are you? Praise the Lord. He said, bless you, man of God. But look at the point. Have you, have you done what the Lord asked you to do? Brethren, the point we must not just jump. By the time he opened his mouth and started sharing the lies, the sheep started bleating. The sheep may not bleat when you want the sheep to bleat. You may do what you want to do, but you cannot stop the sheep from bleating. You may hide what you want to hide, but at a point in time, the sheep is going to bleed. The sheep is going to bleed. Today, as you're hearing the sound of my voice, it's an opportunity to repent. What is repentance? Repentance is to declare, I won't do it again. It is to make a U-turn. It's, it's not about crying on the altar and getting back to the same thing. It's not about coming to the altar. Hear me? Your gift is nonsense before God. If you are not willing to turn away. Your gift is rejected by God. If you are not willing to say, I repent of my iniquity. I turn away. Ozo Yesu kwala na Jesus na bia. Okwika kwa kwa la na Jesus na bia Onye nezu Yesu kwa la na Jesus na bia Onye nezu Yesu kwa la na Jesus na bia Anyhow Let me leave that one I remind you the one that touches my heart more When Samuel was about dealing with a guy, Samuel said, Bring me a guy. The king that saw spared. And the Bible said, A guy came out cautiously. A guy made a statement. And let me remind us the statement of a guy. You know what Agag said? The bitterness of death is past. I am willing to die. It is mission accomplished. I have succeeded in making God reject us all. My mission has been fulfilled. If I am dying now, let me die. Come on, summer, you can chop up my head. Manda yabu saya kama. If you don't want to kill a gag, a gag will cause God to reject you. Expose a gag before a gag exposes you. Bring a gag to the altar. Bring a gag to yourself. I say, bring a gag to yourself to the altar. Don't allow a gag to mature until a gag comes out to boost. The bitterness of death is gone. If a gag says that, 
It means you are on the highway to destruction. Bring me Hagar. Hagar said the bitterness of death. God. Somebody has a mission in your life. There, is, there are agents over your life. Agents. You are a target because you are a champion. Because you are a champion. Agag is working under the skin to bring, to, to bring about your rejection. To bring about your downfall. But tonight is an opportunity. Can you drag a gag to this altar? Can somebody drag a gag? Say, hey, gag, you won't kill me. Hey, gag, I will expose you. Hey, gag, you won't deny me of the precious kingdom. My mind goes back to a man when he was selected. They say he was very tall. Saul was tall. Saul. I guess he was handsome. I guess Israel rejoiced when Saul emerged. Sometimes Satan takes you to do foolish things. Secret foolish things that will manifest as a public shameful thing. Foolish Masondo. What are you foolishly doing secretly that will soon manifest publicly as a shame? What are you secretly doing that will soon manifest publicly as a shame? I want to stop here tonight. I just have about four minutes to my time. Somebody said, I have fought the good fight. That's eternity driven life. Do you know him? He was rough. Persecutor. I have been asking a question, brethren. Let me be sincere. Which one is better? To begin in the spirit and end up in the flesh. Or to begin in the flesh and end up in the spirit. It would have been better you started as a hypocrite. And then ended as a, back, as, as a repentant soul. It would have been better. You started as a repentant sepulcher. It would have been better you started as a compromiser. And then ended as a spiritual person. Your yesterday was great. Your beginning was wonderful. You were consecrated. You hated iniquity. You loved righteousness. You were for God. You rejected sin and iniquity. Immorality was not a part of you. You were a champion of holiness. I ask you. Who bewitched you? Oh, you gonna get here? Who bewitched you? How are you running up this way? How? How? How are you running up this way? How have you compromised your standard? How have you come back to your vomit? Who did this to you? Which pastor did that to you? Which prophet did that to you? Which evangelist did that to you? Which group did that to you? Who removed your consecration? Who removed your holiness? Who removed your purity? There was a time Saul or Paul was struggling. At the struggling part of his life, he said, Things I hate to do, I see myself doing them. Things I don't want to do, I see myself doing them. Things I like to do, they run away from me. That was the struggling time of his life. At a point, he said, What will separate me from the love of God? 
shall tribulation. It means he passed through tribulation. Is it false brethren? He passed through false brethren. Who? Oh! Is it things to come? Is it strange doctrine? Who oh, shall separate me? Brethren, to draw the line. At a point he said, I am not running like somebody beating the air. No, I am running that I might obtain. And he said to himself, a man of discipline, he said, I buffet my body. I put my body under chains. I flog my body. My body, if I let you, you will drink alcohol. My body, if I let you, you want to commit sexual immorality. My body, if, you want, if, if I let you, you want to lead me to Bush Road. If I allow you, you want me to live on number seven Hell Street, my body. Things you want to do, the craving of your body. If I allow it, it will lead me to hell. It will cause me to perish. Therefore, I bring my body under subjection. I chain them, lest after preaching to others, I myself will be cast away it is possible a great preacher can end in hell a great pastor can end in hell a great missionary can end in hell a great worker can end in hell it is possible it is possible a talented musician can end in hell a great evangelist can end in hell it is possible it is possible I therefore bring myself. I therefore bring my body. My body, you must be here. My body, I won't let you do what you want to do. I won't let you go where you want to go. Lest after preaching this thing to other people, I myself oh, will be cast away. No wonder at the end of his life he was able to reflect and say, I have looked around my in and out, my private life and my public life. All I remember is this I have fought the good fight. I have kept the fight. I have finished my assignment. What I am looking for is for that crown, victor's crown, the crown righteousness when the Lord is keeping for those who will love his appearance bow your heads in prayers tonight which one do you belong to eternity careless life eternity driven life do you want to shatter your destiny you want to shatter your destiny which way are you going who bewitched you who bewitched you this is a time to come to altar if you want to come to altar this is your time who bewitched you who removed consecration from you who removed anointing from you who removed the holiness from you who took you back to your vomit this is your time to die Sharima mama ma ke ba kuntu o sambraga da baba bale mo shaika lonsi kare mo shaya la baba is a time to tell god i'm sick of eternity careless life take me back to where i first met you take me to the platform of holiness let me renew me father restore me tonight restore me let the spirit of holiness and purity come afresh upon me creating me her clean her hands oh lord i renew thy spirit within me kaila mama mbroko shaya Amen. I clean heart, oh Lord. I renew thy spirit within me. Cast it all away from your presence, oh Lord. Take now the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me. 
the joy of the salvation and renew thy spirit Makika Mashenda I want everybody to stand to your feet wherever you are today create a miracle in heart oh Lord and renew thy spirit within me Papa creating me a clean heart. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. I renew thy spirit within me. Cast me not away. Cast me not away. Cast me not away. From your presence. Restore unto me the joy of the salvation and renew the spirit. Bless your hand on your head. Kabushe Kabori Alaba. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Secretly visited Naaman. What did he give you? What did you get from Naaman? You better bring it now. Pour it to the altar now. Hey! Pour it to the altar. What did you get from Naaman? What? I want to ask the mother of this church to come. Everybody place your hand on your head. She will use the burden of a mother. Tell God. We don't want to end the way Gehazi ended. Kabushe Kabori Alaba. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Secretly visited Naaman. What did he give you? What did you get from Naaman? You better bring it now. Pour it to the altar now. Hey! Pour it to the altar. What did you get from Nema? What? Yeah, my Shandala I want to ask the mother of this church to come. Everybody place your hand on your head. She will use the burden of a mother. Tell God. We don't want to end the way Gehazi ended. Not at all. Thank you, Holy We don't want a gag to make a statement he made concerning Saul. By the time we end our life, we want to speak like Paul. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my assignment. Grace. We need grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Dagi na bika na para unso bundi oko
Can I go back? 